Well, hello, fellow gamers, and welcome back to Greg's Game Room. Now, today I would like to talk about an Atari system that you may or may not have heard about. That would be the Atari Flashback 2. Now the thing that is special about the Flashback 2 is that it is actually a genuine Atari 2600 on a chip. And it was created by a team called Legacy Engineering headed by Marty Goldberg and Kurt Vendel. Now there was a bit of sad news uh, a few weeks ago. It turns out that Kurt has passed away. And Kurt was a very well-known member of the Atari community, uh, was head of of the Atari Museum. You know, he kept up with a lot of history that uh, that Atari had. I mean, I think he even went dumpster diving. But he was always the person that I looked to for Atari knowledge. And he, along with Marty Goldberg, also wrote a book that I consider to be pretty much the standard for Atari history called uh, Atari Business is Fun. And he was also working on some other projects. I think there was something called the XM module for the Atari 7800 that allowed it to have voice and high score saving and and different things like that and he was kind of like the guy that I would ask for approval on some of my different projects especially if I was doing like a video or something like that I would ask him you know could you check out this video make sure that I didn't screw anything up and uh, he was always happy to oblige and told me I did a great job when I was working on uh, the Atari Times I just emailed him and said hey would you mind taking a picture of your Pong machine uh, I want to put it on the cover of my new book and you know he happily went and took a picture of it and here it is, right here on the cover of my uh, Atari Times uh, book. So yeah, I was very sad to learn that he had uh, passed away, and uh, he's definitely going to be missed. With all that said, I would just like to talk about the Atari Flashback 2, which is something that Kurt worked on along with his friend Marty Goldberg. And he was really interested in making this as genuine and true of an actual Atari system as he possibly could. You know, he worked on the Atari on a chip, which this is the only system that has that. And they went so far as to make it possible to, you know, put a cartridge port in here. So anyway, I thought that was cool. All right, well, here it is, the Atari flashback number two, 40 built-in games. I mean, really, do you need any more than that many games in a game console? Just plug into your TV and play. One or two person play includes two classic Atari 2600 joysticks, which will work on a real 2600. Includes Atari retro favorites like Pong, which was never released for the 2600, Asteroids, Centipede, Pitfall, River Raid, and 35 other classic games. Then here on the back of the box, we got more of these screenshots, Asteroids, Pitfall, Yars Revenge up here, Missile Command, Lunar Lander, which is strangely not showing an actual screenshot of the game. This is more like a drawn image. Adventure, Maze Craze, Outlaw, which is a lot of fun. Combat, of course, River Raid, and then Pong, which is a recreation of Pong for the 2600 to make it look like the uh, like the real thing. But there was never a Pong cartridge for the 2600. All right, flip the flap up here like this, open it up, and ooh, there it is. Oh, and there's also this clear plastic cover that uh, causes a lot of glare with, uh, with lights. Ooh. Okay, enough of that. All right, here you got the manual, the Atari Flashback 2. Hey, there's a left joystick controller and a right joystick controller. Make sure you don't mix those up. Now that's actually very helpful, the uh, game console specifications, because if you ever lose your power supply, then at least you'll be able to determine uh, what would be a good replacement based on this information here. So basically it gives you a, kind of a rundown of each of the games, like you know, let's say Aquaventure, which was never released, but uh, that's, a, that's a really fun game. You're a world famous treasure hunter on the trail of Calico Blue's sunken pirate ship. Recently your salvage crew has discovered the location of what it thinks is Calico Blue's treasure based on his last known coordinates. That's pretty wordy. Can't wait to show you that game later. All right, so anyway, that's the manual. Uh, of course, right here, of course, you got your, uh, your power supply. You got your uh, joystick one, which feels really good. It doesn't, if you listen to it, it's very quiet. It doesn't make any clicky noises, which is nice. That feels authentic. Although this, little logo on here is not authentic. It was not here originally on the uh, real Atari 2600 joystick. And just for comparison, here is a real Atari 2600 joystick, which time has caused the, uh, the orange ring here to wear off the paint. But other than that, this is uh, a real 2600 joystick compared to the Flashback 2 joystick. 
Uh, they look pretty, pretty similar. Pretty similar in height and all that good stuff. And of course, the important part is that these connectors are identical, which means you can put this joystick on here or this joystick on a real 2600 or 7800 and uh, it'll play just fine. So good old nine pin joystick connector pioneered by your friends at Atari. Oh, and then here's the uh, right joystick, I, I guess. Yeah, don't mix them up. And then lastly, here is the console itself. And here's your power button, which locks into place. Uh, it doesn't uh, pop back up like a reset button does. Got your reset button here. Then you got your left difficulty, which does lock into place. And your right difficulty, which does lock into place. I usually leave those up. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you if it's the uh, A or B difficulties on when pushing it in or out. I guess you just have to figure it out when you're playing it. And then, of course, you have your select button here. Now, of course, these buttons don't quite match up the same order as they would on a real 2600. This is my uh, Vader unit, uh, where on this one you've got the, the power button here and you got the color black and white, which you don't really need that often. Although on some games, like Space Shuttle, you do have to have the color black and white. And fortunately, they did include this on the back of the unit. So you got your color and your black and white here, just in case you need to do that switch too. But what I find interesting is that they, uh, they've got the reset button over here, whereas on the real 2600, it's way over here on this side. And the same thing with the game select switch, it's way on the end, but it's uh, second from the end on, on the, real, the real 2600. So a little bit of a rearranging of the buttons here, probably because most people would just go straight from the power to the reset and just, just start playing a game. And then you get your right controller on the back here, you got your power plug here right there, and then you got your left controller. As for how you would hook this up to a television set, you're gonna have to use the good old fashioned RCA connectors. There is no HDMI, but believe me, this is much better than how it would look on a real 2600 just by using this uh, composite. Get that little dust off there, it's bothered me. All right, so let's hook this bad boy up and give it a run through. It's been a while since I have played this and uh, I'm really excited, really excited to get back into trying the old 2600 Flashback 2. All right, so when you fire it up, you're going to get the different uh, categories that you have. You got Adventure Territory, you've got Arcade Favorites, you've got Space Station, You've got skill and action zone, and you've got adventure territory again. All right, let's start with adventure territory. Let's play a little bit of adventure here. You just go ahead and press the uh, button on the controller, and then we're gonna have to hit uh, reset. And why is this showing up in black and white? Oh, you know why? Because I had the black and white switch. There you go, now we got color. One of my favorite games of all time. I play this all the time on this channel. I mean, it needs more love here. I'm just gonna love this dragon with the sword here for a little bit. <laughs> and again, it's going to play absolutely perfectly as it would on a real 2600 because it is a real 2600. It's on a chip, so it's going to be perfect. All right, so in order to reset, we're going to have to hit the power button on the system. Hit it again to bring the system back up again. Adventure 2 is a hack of the original game. I haven't really played this too much, but it's quite a bit different. The dragon is significantly faster, and he just ate me. That was quick. Oh, there's the sword! Come back! Give me the sword! Uh-oh. Shoot. What the heck? This is supposed to be a fountain, I think. Get back here! Get back here! Ah, oh, stupid bat. Uh-oh. No, no, no. You can't have the bridge. Bat, stay away from me. Ah! Oh, that's not a deal I want to make. Next will be Haunted House, which is a interesting game. Where's the exit? Where's the exit? How do I get out? Oh no, the bat got me! Green bat. It's not like the Black Bat from Adventure. Return to Haunted House, I guess, is another hack. I've never really played it too much. Oh, it's an adventure hack to make it look like Haunted House. Okay. What the heck was that? <laughs> As if Haunted House wasn't confusing enough, they had to make it uh, even bigger. I can't kill whatever this ghost is, which... Oh, shoot. This is kind of neat. I like this. Secret Quest is one of the later games that was released for the 2600. I believe Nolan Bushnell had some kind of input on this game even long after he was gone. But uh, it's a pretty neat game. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Oh yeah, I forgot I had like a sword. Can I kill this guy? Oh, there we go. I gotta get the oxygen. That guy looks like a walking pile of something. Okay, wizard. I'm walking around in a maze. 
I'm a wizard. I'm getting attacked by flies. Oh, and the glaive came out to shoot me. The glaive is shooting me. <laughs> Go away, glaive. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Oh, I can shoot now. What the heck? Boy, you really got to use your imagination for this game. All right, under arcade favorites, of course, we're going to have our arcade asteroids, which is really just asteroids where they've hollowed out the the, the asteroids in the ship. But it's the same exact game, something different. Personally, I would have preferred they just kept it the way it was and not messed with it, because it doesn't look like the arcade anyway, so I'll just leave it the way it was. Then we've got arcade pong, which I'm sure is going to be great playing by myself. I don't think there is a two-player option for the... Oh, oh, there it goes. The computer does play. Cool. It's pretty good, except it seemed like the ball jumps. Oh, look at this. I'm stuck in a loop now. I'll just stay right here the whole time. Oh, no! I missed it! I missed it! Now, I wonder if this game would work with paddles. Alright, well, it looks like it actually does work with real paddle controllers. Oh, man, this is fantastic. Doesn't get any better than this, guys. Pinnacle of video gaming right here. There are two hidden paddle games on the Flashback 2. In order to access this, you're going to want to press up one time, down nine times, up seven times, and then down two times. And that brings you to the hidden paddle games section. Oh, that's so cool. So we've got Super Breakout and Warlords. So let's, uh, let's fire up Warlords. Of course, this is not going to work with the joystick controllers. I have to use the paddle controllers, which is why these are hidden games, because not everybody's going to have paddle controllers. Playing a, a four-player game, unfortunately, I only have, uh, I'm only here to play with myself. I love, I love Warlords, one of the best paddle games ever. And then as I thought, after I reset the uh, console, I lost my whole um, uh, the paddle game section. It's too bad it doesn't just save that there once you've, once you've put that in, but we'll just do 1972 again. I thought it would be better if I just give you a quick demonstration showing you one-handed play with Super Breakout. It's challenging. Try it. Try it for yourself, just see, just to see how hard this is. Alrighty, let's get back to the more traditional games. Asteroids Deluxe, which is really just regular asteroids, but they've hacked it. Same game, slightly different graphics, different, uh, slightly different enemies that come after you, these little triangle guys. It seems a little glitchy though, doesn't it? I mean, it doesn't look like the ship moves smoothly. Every once in a while you can see him jump or crash into an asteroid. And we got Centipede. Surprisingly good port of Centipede, even though it really doesn't look much like the arcade. Lunar Lander, which is another game that never was released for the 2600. This is a hack, or uh, I guess you could say it was a homebrew. I don't know that this is a hack of anything. Oh no, I'm gonna crash. Oh, I think I crashed. And then we got Millipede, which is, you know, like Centipede on steroids. Missile Command, one of the greats. Although there is a slight problem I notice at the bottom of the screen where your missiles are stored. There's like a blue line down there. I'm not sure why that is. But considering this is not emulation, this is a true 2600, something with the Atari 2600 on a chip must not be perfect. There must be something weird about it. It's got that blue line down there. Uh, then we got Space Duel, which is uh, another hack of asteroids. But again, just like uh, Asteroids Deluxe, it seems jinky somehow. It seems like the, uh, the enemies are asteroids. They're not really asteroids, but whatever these enemies are that I'm shooting, they don't seem to move smoothly. Sometimes they jump around. Kind of annoying. Then we got like rotating cubes. Yeah, I think I would rather just play the original asteroids. And then we got Battle Zone, which is another great classic arcade Atari game. Oh wow, I got lucky on that shot. Of course, this version of the game looks nothing like the arcade, which is all black and white and wireframes. But uh, honestly, I think this is a little bit better just because it's nicer to look at. Although one thing I notice is not in this game are the uh, the cubes and the pyramids and stuff in the in the, in the way to protect you. So you're just out in the open, ready to get killed by a yellow spaceship thing. All right, let's look under Space Station. We got Caverns of Mars, which is a another uh, homebrew, I believe, based on the uh, Atari 8-bit version, Atari 8-bit computer version. And basically, you just fly downwards, trying to get to the... Uh, trying to get to the bottom. You're that A spaceship. It looks like a letter A. And all you gotta do is get down to the bottom of this cavern, and I think you have to fly back upwards once you're done. 
Oh, I got rapid fire. I don't have to keep pushing the button over and over again. That's nice. Oh, here we go. Now I must be at the bottom. Enemy destroyed. 14, 13, 12, 11. Oh, I okay. I think I blew up Mars. I did it. I blew up Mars. Quadrun. Okay, this game is one that has voice in it, which is kind of interesting. Quadrun, quadrun, quadrun. I can shoot, and I can move left and right. And if I push down, I go to the down section. If I push up, I go to the up section. I guess I have to shoot those guys. That's probably my whole, my whole failing there. All right, saboteur. I gotta sit here and watch this whole thing here. All right, I get to my shooting thing. I, gotta, I know I gotta stop that missile from getting up. So I think I'm trying to shoot these guys because they're trying to like build the missile, and I'm trying to stop them. There's a yar. Oh, this is strange. So I shoot him, and my laser field or whatever bounces off him and shoots downwards and hits those those things at the bottom. Uh oh, I think they launched the missile on me. All right, space war. And again, it's one where you kind of need a friend, and I don't have any friends, so I can't, I can't play this. This game kind of reminds me of combat, except you're in space, green space, I suppose. Guard of Revenge, one of the more popular games of all time for the 2600, which was actually based on Star Castle. Atari wanted a Star Castle game, but. Uh, for whatever reason, they couldn't do it. Howard Scott Warshaw thought, well, I'll do I'll do Yara's Revenge instead. All right, and then Yara's Return is pretty much just a hack of Yara's Revenge. And you can see it's, it's more of a Star Castle-y type version of the game, where I'm flying on the outside, trying to get in there and shoot the cool tile. Got a few glitches to it. As you can see, the whole screen just jitters constantly, which is... Hard on the eyes. Hard on the eyes. Alright, lastly is the skill and action zone. So let's see what we got in here. Ooh, 3D tic tac toe. I'm just putting O's everywhere. I win. I got four in a row. Okay, here we go. This is Aquaventure, the game I was talking about earlier. This is an unreleased game that uh, is really, really good. I wish it had been released. Okay, you got your nice little uh, scuba diver guy shooting fish. Trying to go down to different different levels. Oh, gotta get the treasure. Gotta get back up to the top. And uh, get the mermaid. Why she's at the top of the water, I don't know. Oh no, he's coming to get my, eat my air hose. Oh no, the turtle ate my air hose, I'm dead. It's a lesson for you kids. Don't ever let turtles eat your air hose. All right, here's Atari Climber. It's pretty good, pretty good little homebrew game. You play as this uh, kid who's lost his baseball. And it's at the top of the screen there. And you got to get to the uh, top of this, I guess it's a building or construction site or whatever. There's these light lasers going back and forth here trying to kill me. Oh, hey, the ball moved just at the right time, too. Maybe I should rewrite the story of this. And, and uh, the kid is trying to break into some rich mansion and steal the, uh, like, a, a Babe Ruth baseball or something. That would have been interesting. Cause that's that makes more sense with these laser gate things. All right, then you got your standard combat, which again you you kind of need two two players to to play combat. But this would be the game that came with it, included the tanks, included tank pong, included the jets, included the biplanes, included all the other good stuff. You play this game, you know it. It's a classic. But did you know there was a combat? Two. It's not as good. Basically, it's just the tanks, and instead of being in some strange, you know, battle zone thing or whatever, now I'm like going after this guy. Oh, he's like in his in his base. I gotta shoot the base down before I can shoot the tank. I got him. I'm sure this would be much more fun if it was two player. Oh, look at that! I nuclear I nuclear bombed the guy. And then we got Dodge M, which is based on a an Atari classic game. I forget what the name of it is. Dodge M, probably. <laughs> then here's Fatal Run. This is kind of a late uh, game in the Atari 2600's history. Got some really good graphics for that system. Kind of a pole position style game, but I think we're racing time to get uh, medical supplies to a, uh, a city. And we're like in this Mad Max style world. 
hit the button to go faster. Go, go. We don't have all day. We gotta get these medical supplies to the to the poor children. Come on. I mean, look at the look at over in the left uh, bottom corner. There's even like a radar screen. Imagine trying to code this game. <laughs> Especially since the 2600 was really only meant for Pong style games and they, they came up with this. It's pretty amazing. And then we got Frog Pond, which is, uh, I'm, I'm a frog on a lily pad just going around just eating, trying to eat flies. And then you got Hangman where you're trying to guess the word. Uh, it's a five letter word. Oh, okay. False. That's probably the word. There we go. This game is good. False. Human cannonball. All you gotta do is launch your guy into that uh, water tower. Oops, I think I overshot the water tower. And then you got maze craze here. It's generating a maze. I'm running around. I'm escaping the guy. This is really, I think, just a two-player game. I don't think there's a one-player option. There's a couple variants of this game. One that's only got 16 games. Another one's got, what, 255 or something. And now is one of the 255s. So I thought, oh, man, that, that game's got a lot of replayability. 255 games, you can't miss. All right, Off the Wall is kind of a uh, breakout style game. Pretty cool. Aw, you get these little bonuses that bounce around down there too. Help you destroy the wall. Maybe it's the Great Wall, I'm trying to destroy the Great Wall. Yes, I'm a peasant I'm trying to destroy the Great Wall of China. That's gotta be it. But why is there a worm on the Great Wall of China? Oh, I killed him! I got him! Got the worm! I've protected China from the giant worm- Uh-oh, there's another one. The giant worms are just keep- they're just gonna keep coming forever! Alright, Outlaw. I really like this game. It's a fun game to play with your kids. Alright. Pilgrim. I don't like the way you look. Ugh! Oh, there's a, there's a cactus in my way. I don't like the way you look. Take that! Get out of my way, stagecoach. I got some outlaws to kill. Very simple game, but a lot of fun. All right, and here is the classic game from Activision known as Pitfall, where you play as Pitfall Harry, traveling through the jungle, jumping over um, wood, I guess. That, I guess that's wood. Really, I've never quite understood why <laughs> we've got rolling logs in this game. Maybe it was a, a derivative of uh, Donkey Kong. I'm not sure what David was thinking. I should have asked him. Uh, in the interview, what were you thinking about those logs when you uh, came up with Pitfall? What, what does, what's the deal with the logs? My favorite part, of course, is swinging across the vine and doing the Tarzan yell. Jumping over snakes. Look, it's the gold! I get... Oh, shoot, there's a big pit in the way. I got the gold, I got the gold, I'm rich and you're not. Alright, after Pitfall is Radar Lock. This is a great game. This is uh, based on Solaris. I think it was also programmed by Doug Neubauer, New 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 who programmed uh, Star Raiders. But uh, look at this, this is so cool. Flying as a jet, shooting other jets, watching the clouds roll by. Cool game, but uh, this can get a, little, get a little repetitive. I don't know, I, I think it may be more fun than Afterburner, actually. At least I'm not dying every two seconds like an afterburner. Okay, River Raid. Another one of my favorite games of all time. Programmed by Carol Shaw for Activision. Just destroy the bridges and avoid the helicopters and the ships. Pass over the fuel to refuel and then blow it up. I like to fly through this as quickly as I can. Just to see how quick I can do it. Going slow is for wimps. Alright, Save Mary is another, I believe this was another uh, prototype game that was never released. I think what you have to do is grab these bricks and drop them down. So that Mary can climb out. Oh, I just killed Mary. <laughs> it's called Save Mary, not Kill Mary. I'll save you, Mary, I'll save you. Did I just kill her? <laughs> I just killed her again. <laughs> Sorry, Mary, you're gonna die. All right, our last two games, Video Checkers and Video Chess. This is like the harder level, I think. 
Jump. I have to jump? Oh, I gotta jump. Okay. Mm. And lastly is going to be video chess, which I don't think I've actually ever played before. Move. Put it the piece there. I'm trying to get it to place the piece. Yeah, I have to question the uh, reasoning behind putting video chess and checkers on here. Two games that I highly doubt very many people would actually play. All right, so there you have it. That is the Atari Flashback 2. A pretty good early mini system. Predates the NES Mini and the Sega Genesis Mini and the TurboGrafx-16 Mini. While it is great that it is a genuine Atari 2600 on a chip, the fact that they included like three different versions of Asteroids and a couple different versions of Adventure, they could have included some some other games to, to spread out the variety a little bit. Also games like 3D Tic-Tac-Toe and Chess and Checkers, I just don't see people, you know, being too interested in those games. Anyway, it's a good system. It's a great system especially if you want to hack it it's the only true Atari 2600 flashback so because of that it's gonna stay safely in my collection all right so what do you think about these flashback systems do you think the Atari flashbacks are any good if so let me know down in the comments thank you all for watching I really appreciate it take care remember to hit the like share subscribe and especially the bell icon if you would like to be notified of future videos that I make thanks for watching take care and we'll see you again next time bye bye